Hello, everyone, and welcome to the broadcast. Tonight, we are going to be continuing our Hollow Justice Ace Attorney trilogy uh, playthrough. Pressing some buttons, sorry. Uh, we will definitely progress this time, uh, e e even if it turns out to be chat heavy. Uh, we are we're we're totally going to progress. Hey there, Eli White. Or I'm sorry, Wolf. Wolf is easier. <laughs> How we doing today? How we doing? Let's see, kitty wise, we have Ember and Sammy visible. Uh, one of the brothers, I think, is looking out the window. Can't tell for sure. Let me let me zoom in on the wide view here. Uh, both brothers are looking out the window. Herbert is leaning right up next to it, and Mason is on the lower lower platform looking out there. They can often see small critters. But yes, Apollo Justice, Apollo Justice. Uh, last time we were just starting a new... Uh, a new investigation day in the sort of uh, concert trial. And I think we got into the second or third room. <laughs> Since we we moved very slowly, we moved very slowly. But uh, we'll we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. remember where oh there they are this guy has a full-on murder mitt going on here so i gotta i gotta trim it a bit doing well over here wolf doing well bit of a rough morning had some of that uh my joints hurt for no reason kind of day but uh that has calmed down i'm starting the process of updating the cat cameras so that they are uh, fixed POE cameras instead of uh, wireless ones. Hey there, Drew. Drew, we were going to do programming today, but I decided to break it the week up a little differently. We're going to be doing programming on Friday and Sunday. Today will be uh, Ace Attorney. Saturday will be some game that I haven't decided yet. There are options. <laughs> That's okay, Drew. I mean, take it easy. You'll get well. I am checking Sky's murder mitts here, making sure I get all the pointiest ones. I'm sorry. Hey there, cats. There we go. Oh, we got a double cat on the bed. Set that over here. Okay, let's get the game running. Going to pause the music. And as a reminder, this game is kind of, it can be loud. <laughs> it's definitely loud on the title screen. You know, we'll, we'll probably never know, Wolf. Uh, there's always the translation factor, you know? The idea that even if we map, like, let's say we were to do some sort of, you know, brain compu computer interface, there would still be a anthropo anthropocentric um, impression of it. So we would be placing uh, human perspective meaning on stuff they did. Um, you can get 
an impression of that, there are a couple of channels like Billy Speaks and whatnot, uh, where they have a series of buttons where what you do is you record a word so that when you press a big button, it's like a giant button, uh, it plays that word. And you teach animals general concepts of what happens and what each button means. And at least to us, like we try to impart that. And it takes a while, but uh, dogs and cats can seem to convey general concepts through that. Nothing like, you know, they're not. They're not composing poetry or anything like that, but it's your very basic, I want to play, uh, I want attention from this person, where is this person, I want to go outside, uh, that kind of stuff. The, the difficulty is that sort of the interface, that, that, that gap between what the animal is trying to communicate and what we understand. Uh, a big difficulty with cats is the native language of cats, uh, you know, as it is, uh, as it were, is mostly body language. Like when cats communicate with each other, vocalization is usually like a very strong threat sound uh, and a pain sound, the, the hiss and yowl kind of stuff. Uh, but it's mostly like purring and whatnot if you're going to get a sound out of a cat. Everything else is, you know, tail posture, ear position, uh, how, they, how they like rub up against each other, that kind of thing. Those kind of things. And you can see that in domestic cats still. If you want to know how your cat's feeling, um, watch its tail. If your cat trots around with that tail straight up, kind of question mark hook at the top, that that's a that's a happy, confident cat. That's uh, when he passed. Tom was somewhere fourteen to sixteen, I think. He was getting on in age. He he was he was a bit of a gray muzzle by that point. But sweet old boy. And you could get an impression from his size based on that. That video. He was a big boy. Like I tell folks, it's. Uh, there is actually a, an acrylic kind of shield over top of my keyboard. Some of it's a bit jerry rigged together to have like. Uh, it's propped up at like 45 degrees. And uh, Tom was the primary reason for the cat shield. Because uh, he would flop his head or his paws over onto the keyboard. Uh, his paws could easily hit six to nine keys at once. And his head, like he could roll across uh, a, a third of the keyboard all at once. Hey there, Sharky. Welcome to the broadcast. We're, do we're doing some... Uh, Free, free stream chatter. And hello there, Cod. Uh, you know, I could infer that that's Call of Duty killer. Uh, or do you actually mean a killer of a type of fish? I have two older VTuber avatars. I have cats. There are, there is a period, well, there's a period where there's no avatar and just a cat cam. Uh, there is a period where there is a, a PNG that is, uh, you know, a couple frames and uh, animated through those frames to follow speech. Then there's a, a live 2D version of that one. And then there's this. Hey there, Khan. Uh, no, Tuxie Cat doesn't tap dance. She is a, she's a really sedate cat. 
Sharky, this is the Apollo Justice Ace Attorney trilogy game, the first game in the trilogy. Uh, it's sort of a mix between adventure game and uh, visual novel, often called like interactive fiction. Um, processing, uh, the, the little sprite in the game that we're working on during our coding streams is the, is inspired by the cat bot, which was inspired by the sprite. It's kind of a, it's kind of a cycle. And hello, Okaneki. Yeah, let me think. There are a couple of horror-like games that have had this. There are some real classics that have been uh, dark fantasy and horror. One of them that was really difficult in places was called Shadowgate. I think Steam has a re-release of that. Okay, I don't think there's anything new that we found in here. Uh, one of the core mechanics is looking around places and finding things that might be relevant. I will be reading the dialogue. The speaker here is, is the same as the one in Lamoror's room. I wonder if this one was blaring as loud as hers. It can be like a puzzle. Um, what you have to do is you have to find all of the key information before it will move on. Like, you can't miss something before progressing, but it's possible to miss something, like to not know what you're supposed to click on. Um... I would have to check cats and see if that is a sufficiently wide range that it doesn't say anything. No personally ident identifying information here. <laughs> Currently, the closest you've got is United States Central Time Zone. <laughs> It is distinctly possible there, uh, Wolf. Uh, this trilogy has actually had one where that wouldn't work because they're the same place that you can click has a which do you want to bring with you, A or B. And uh, you need to pick different ones for different circumstances. Uh, so it would be possible that, it, well, it would universally select the wrong one. For our murder trial, for those that are just joining us, there was a, a rock concert with a guest singer. And during the concert, uh, like in the midst of it, uh, the a person was shot in a dressing room where supposedly there was no way they could have gotten out in or out without somebody noticing in particular, without somebody noticing. So right now, our, our defendant, the one that we're representing, is being accused because they could have fit in through the air vent. Yeah, Sammy is, she's almost in jackknife pose. She doesn't have her hind legs extended far enough forward to be a full kitty jackknife. But close. Closer to bageled at this point. Let's see. Ember is kind of loafed on her side. And, uh... This guy is kind of in troublemaker mode here. He's, he's playing with Sherbet, but you can see his tail. He's twitchy. Maybe cats, maybe. No immediate plans. Hello, Sherbet. 
Sherbet is the same colors as Mason, who you can see on camera right now, but he's more asymmetrical and he likes to jump up on the headrest of my chair. Yeah, and as far as my cat's con, Sky is the one that's plotting something. I am Wolf. I am I have two streams on YouTube and one stream on Twitch. I started streaming on Twitch when they um uh reversed their craniorectal policy of uh not allowing multi streaming. I haven't seen Pokemon dance cats. Unaware of it. Hey there, Ash. Let's see. So one of the gimmicks is that both of the dressing rooms have a live feed of the concert going on with the intent of making it so that the people in the dressing rooms might know when their cue is coming up kind of thing. <laughs> uh, so I'm wondering how that goes because... One of the assertions leading into the investigation day this time was that the blind singer that was a guest in this concert was walking by one of the windows, like a tiny window into one of the dressing rooms, which is there for some reason. Uh, but the prosecution asserts that she couldn't have heard through that window, which I find puzzling. Well, thank you, Ash. Thank you. I appreciate it. I don't see a volume control anywhere in the room. This is new information. This is asserting an importance about the speakers. My guess is they give all the rooms equal treatment. Yeah, they're asserting that this is important now. You mean equal punishment. Uh, Apollo, our point of view character, doesn't like the music. Um... This is Trucy, and she very much likes the music. Uh, I think primarily because she is a kind of zero to 60 fangirl of the leader of the band. Uh, this particular band is composed entirely of like prosecutors and detectives. So a lot of their themes are law enforcement. So we're going to be re-clicking on stuff. I didn't really do any celebration myself. Uh, but I know some folks that had a particularly good time, and it was very restful for me. Had some back pain at the time, and that gave me time to recuperate. Pretty heavy-duty gloves. I believe that these gloves are the lead prosecutors, the head of the band. Uh, since he drives a motorcycle. Uh, Tom, this is the symbol of the band, apparently drawn in lipstick. Uh, in particular, uh, that's that's G for Gavin Ears. Uh, the band named after the lead singer, Gavin. <laughs> it's one of those bands you know like Josie and the Pussycats and that kind of thing where it's uh, the lead singer gets all of the billing yeah, if you do the gloves maybe they have to carry hot pots or something they're a little thick I couldn't even stuff a pigeon in those she is a stage magician Catch you later there, Ash. Thanks for joining us. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> we checked that. A cruiser guitar. They sold those in commemorative five, to commemorate five years of the band, the patrol cruiser guitar. Rocking it hard under the speed limit. <laughs> Today's beverage is Canada Dry Ginger Ale. Diet Canada, Canada Dry Ginger Ale.
at least in my experience, Khan, if somebody's going to be speed, if the people that uh, amongst the people that are speeding, uh, police cars are always amongst them. <laughs> Um, couple years ago now, uh, cats. Uh, Tom was a big sweetheart. He is actually the uh one of the first two cats I owned. I mean, they're not gonna pull themselves over, Con. <laughs> um, uh, had a uh, they were brothers, uh, Bob and Tom. Uh, Bob. Bob, uh, let's see, it'd be four plus years ago. He passed away as well. Uh, he was bigger and uh, much more of a softy. Uh, like, really sweet cat. He would uh, he would snuggle right up, and if he wanted you to wake up in the morning, he'd get right up uh, next to you, like, scooch in right next to your head, and he'd do the little needy paw thing. But um, kind of, you know, normally with a with a cat, it's like right. Their paws are real close to each other, almost parallel. Uh, he wouldn't. His paws would go all over the place. And uh, once he, he put a clawed paw like right up my nostril, like right up there. And one thing about Bob uh, was that. Noises in general would startle him like really startle him bolt and run kind of startle um so a loud noise happened while this was going on and happily the claws didn't dig in in the nostril but it it did it it did slice the upper lip <laughs> only only light scarring But no, he was big. He was bigger than Tom in that picture. Big boy. Uh, Tom was much more sociable, you know, still startled by new people, but he would come out and like socialize very often. And again, they were Maine Coons, so you're talking like they were male Maine Coons. So you're talking like 20 pounds on the low end. Though some breeders have been trying to make Maine Coons smaller for some reason. Well, hopefully you don't need to sleep soon, Wolf. <laughs> There's a cruiser bass and a cruiser drum set and a cruiser keyboard, even a cruiser whistle. I'm not so sure about that last one. It's for blowing the whistle on criminals. Uh, that's the thing. Uh, they they don't fall into the normal chunk territory. That's like normal body weight for a Maine Coon. A chunky Maine Coon would be pushing like towards the 30 pound area. <laughs> um, interestingly, Bob and Tom took after their grandfather, not their father as far as size. Um, in that their their father was something like um thirty pounds, and built like a like he was muscly. That that was there was there was very little fat on that cat, but he was huge, just huge cat. Playful as all get out too. It was kind of adorable. Watching him like rampage around chasing a standard cat toy. Oh, uh, cats, I, I've just I've fallen behind on the shorts and I'm trying to figure out a model that is easier to sustain. And the the sleep problems have completely blown the schedule for that. I think that actually requires a whistle, Trucy. So Lamar's postcard, they have her kind of generic logo. 
the landscape painter in sound. That is what they called her in their marketing. But apparently their marketing person wasn't aware of her directly. They just came up with a cool gimmick for her. Uh, but they only found out that she was blind and was not a landscape painter as a result uh, that they had already put out the marketing material, so they ran with it. And it's become an important part in the story that everybody thought she wasn't blind, but she's blind. And her her pianist was presented as blind, but wasn't blind. And they would do that because then it would look like she was leading him around, but in reality, he was leading her around. Convoluted. Uh, Speedrunning this kind of game wouldn't really, I mean, you could, but it wouldn't be as much of a, it wouldn't be a demonstration of skill. <laughs> because it would really just be memorizing where to click and when, like you could have a script in front of you and just going through it and going skip, skip, skip as fast as you could. So there'd never be that moment where there's like RNG manipulation or uh, demonstrations of intense skill. Like a task of these games would be really boring. <laughs> Must be hard to pretend you can see when you can't. The way she sings so effortlessly, you'd think she had life easy. Another element of her is the the singer is that she has amnesia. The last thing that she remembers includes being blind. Like she can't remember not uh, being blind, but there was a life before that. It's not like she remembers being blind as a child. Um, and the person that was killed who was supposed to be her interpreter that she didn't actually need, was actually an Interpol agent. So, tricky. <laughs> uh, I have never rage quit, cats. Uh, not to the extent of, like, breaking things. Outside of, you know, childhood. Early childhood. Some people are just impressive like that. You know it. Just makes me think about how much further I have to go. We can solve this quickly and not add to her troubles. Uh, in video editing, I tend to uh, try to cut that kind of thing out, cats. Even encoding, cats. Percy gets intense about weird things. Okay, let's let's hop out of this room. I agree, Charlie. There are uh the plot points are melodramatic, uh usually to the point of absurdity. The thing that frustrates me the most about the game is it has adventure game problems now and again. Uh, especially in the idea that you might know what you need. Like, hey, this gun clearly demonstrates that that couldn't have been the person. There are facts that are clearly present on this gun that demonstrates that. And you try to present it at what seems to be a clear moment, but you can't because you have to jump through some hoops to get to a point where it's really, really obvious that they want you to present the gun. Uh, the guitar on the left was a guitar of a variation of a of the police mascot in this world called the Blue Badger. I do not consider playing GTA V a chill experience. It's not a game that I enjoy. Welcome back, Heinz. <laughs> And 
and thanks for swinging through. So we already spoke to her. Let's just make sure. Yep, yep. We're going to go into her dressing room, which was the, uh, this is the scene of the crime. Uh, so the bullet holes were made with a forty-five uh, Magnum, which again, they're, they're asserting that the little dude that uh, is, is the current accused is the one that fired it. And it seems like the sort of combination shooter and firearm that would result in a missing arm. Ah, cool. Oh, consistency. Okay, so we have the chalk outline where he was. Um, bullet entry was through the shoulder blade, or through the front and out the shoulder blade, not clear. They cut the carpet out because there was, like, writing in blood there. Um, often we will get another cat passing through there. Um... Uh, up and right of where they're sleeping is another spot that a cat likes to lay down. And also past that to the top is a window they like to look out of. Look, part of the carpet has been torn up here. That was the part we did the luminol testing on in court. Luminol, right. You know what I couldn't stop thinking? Who's going to pay for this carpet? As long as it's not us. Maybe the shooter? Yes, it's true what they say. Crime doesn't pay. I would hope that carpet replacement costs w weren't the only thing holding you back. This is one of the things at issue. This inexplicably tiny window on the wall of a dressing room that you can see through from the hallway adjacent. This feels like a functional flaw in a dressing room. Like, you have a built-in peephole. So... The thought, so they said it can only open a little, but shot through the window seems like a reasonable proposition. Uh, apparently there was another person in the room with him at around the time of the gunshots. But we'll see. Uh, English is a common language around the world. Uh, you know, in a in a comical sense, uh, English is the current lingua franca. You know, <laughs> hey there, clown. Welcome to the broadcast. We are slowly playing the Ace Attorney trilogy and doing a lot of chatting. Did I click that? This was the window where Lamoureux saw the crime from. Doing good, clown. Doing good. Nice day so far. <laughs> um, occasionally, cats, I try to be extra careful about that kind of thing. It's usually like, as my foot is starting to come down, it catches their tail. It's more likely to trip me than hurt them. I wish it was that simple. So Lamarar initially contended that she could see the crime through there, but after it was revealed that she was blind... Everybody knew that she had lied about that, and she changed her story that she heard the gunshots in conversation in the room. This is true, Wolf. I 
hard to see a crime when you can't see. But she did hear it. Yeah, but the window was closed. And everybody knows windows are perfectly soundproof. <laughs> Maybe she heard it some other way. I don't really collect anything, uh, cats. Seeing these mirrors lined up, I didn't click on the mirror. I clicked on the chair, but whatever. Makes me think I'm really in a dressing room. With all that makeup. I know is they sure don't make for much of a clue. She's not into makeup yet. That's one heavy duty bouquet there. I mean, yeah, it's got a, it almost comes with a plinth. <laughs> I have trouble thinking of flowers as being heavy duty, but they call lots of things heavy duty. Not flowers, they don't. What about a heavy scent? I think you mean heady. What if the flowers were plastic? Uh, most of the murders are through obscurity. Like, there's a lot of evidence, but it doesn't, like, immediately point at somebody. Um... On the streaming computer, the one monitor contains OBS and the other one contains all three chat feeds. And then additionally, OBS includes an amalgamation of all of the chat feeds. My gaming monitor has just the game. They still wouldn't be heavy. Hey, what if they were made out of metal? Uh, like a magnolia made of steel? Ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Ha. One thing, the Ace Attorney game is rife with puns. Just every other thing is a pun. Or like a running gag. Exactly. I, don't, I hope my fans don't start throwing metal flowers at me. Um, a lot of, a lot of these have a similar adventure game vibe. It's, in a classic adventure game, you have, you have similar mechanics in that you're, like, picking up items, but in this one, there's a lot less of, like, smashing items together to see which things combine Doing well, Drew. Doing well. Good call. Have another drink here. <laughs> One of my jump scare clips got me called an NPC. The way those bullets tore through this thick wall. So this is deformed like drywall. Yeah, it's all dented in and cracked. This really looks like drywall to me. Yep, double cat. We have uh, Sky laying on top of Ember. <laughs> uh, but in the hallway outside of this room, the bullets did not pass through. And again, like, oh, there, there is very little sound in this game. Uh, I, I have turned it back on so that you can hear the sound of uh, standard RPG text boxes filling in. I forgot to turn the sound on. <laughs> uh, there is eventually um, music. What kind of European wall? 
Because if it's an old building, then you might get like uh, lath and plaster, which could be simultaneously, you know, I would assume it would be less pleasant to punch. I've been in uh I've been in US houses that had brick walls. Uh I watch all of the chats at the same time. It's I have the I have the individual chats open so that I can see things like membership events since my uh chat aggregator can't doesn't show those as well. Um but it also lets me see things like uh things that are filtered out of chat uh, so that I can verify if I just need to call them and not respond to them. Yeah, yeah. So it went through the person uh, con. Like, the bullet passed from that body over there all the way into, well, the assumption is that the bullet passed through the body all the way over here. We haven't seen them present a bullet as evidence to show that that was a bullet that went through a person. And they didn't find a bullet in the body. No worries, folks. I appreciate the sentiment that you would like to donate, uh, but don't feel obligated. Uh, we did see the body in the uh, initially in the investigation, but they have but twofold is it was moved after the killing. So we found the body. Everybody left the crime scene and when they returned, the body had been moved to the stage area on top of a scaffolding. Uh, it might seem long because the collar is obscuring some of it. In theory, it could be shorter, you know? I don't have like toggles to remove that, but yeah, I think a big part of it is that the, uh, the torso does extend further than it looks like because of the lab coat. Um, I would think the exit holes would look different, but it wouldn't be the first time that the presentation of the scene didn't make sense for Ace Attorney. Don't worry about it, Drew. Don't worry about it. Uh, Ace Attorney games are often more soap opera than logic. Uh, if if you have a choice between something that makes a lot of sense and something that would be over dramatic, generally you pick the over dramatic thing is what went down. No cat. Revolver really was something else. Wonder if someone as little as me could even fire it. Dislocating your shoulder would kind of put a crimp on your stage career. Daddy always has stiff shoulders. Maybe that could loosen him up. Don't even mention it. I'm afraid he might go out and actually try it. Nah, he doesn't have the guts to pull the trigger, I bet. I suspect it's less of holding it to your shoulder and more of not holding it well. Enough that uh, if it's going to hurt your shoulder and mess up your shoulder, it would also be messing up your wrist and elbow on the way. Uh, and potentially your face from the kickback as well.
the apparent shooter was also a little bitty guy. Like, I think a teen, like a small teenage boy. One of the assertions being that the inaccuracy, like the missed shot, um, the first missed shot was because uh, they were they were small and it kicked too much, you know. Uh, one of the bullets is is asserted to be a miss, Con. One of these two holes is a miss. The angle would also be terrible for this kid, because the guy was very tall. The kid's got to be, like, in the four to five foot range. That guy was definitely a, a six and higher range. So the angle of fire, given that the body is over there, isn't great for that kid. You'd expect the bullets to be up here if that was a miss and a hit. Uh, like, small and delicate, you know? <laughs> oh, it's definitely a revolver. I'll pan over to it in a moment. Uh, cats, whenever I mention a cat bot or a nyanite, that's what they look like. The old avatar. You can also see it in my channel emotes and in the uh, donation event pop-ups. Shooter must have used this stepladder to climb up into the vent. Um, so a big reason that they're accusing the kid is that they assert the only way anybody could have gotten in and out of the room is using the vent and the stepladder. They have given zero evidence of that, uh, but it's apparently enough to, on its own, convict him. Uh, this is the proto nanotype, uh, cats. That is what I am. Uh, yes. Um... I think it's uh I think how people refer to it is it's either Japanifornia uh or Tokyofornia something like that as in it's technically in the US like it's asserted in the US uh but um a whole lot of the behaviors and things are very Japanese the courtroom is very Japanese. All this tragedy because someone left a stepladder there. I don't think Mr. Latouse was shot because of the of the ladder. For those that won't hear weren't here for the last stream, Mr. Latouse, his first name is Romaine. Well, it's like Roman, but it's Romaine. So his name is Romain Latus. Get it? <laughs> you think it was Maki? I guess that air vent is pretty small after all. So the fact that the air vent had to be the way out hinges entirely on the idea that um, Detective Sky and Apollo were outside and heard the gunshots. Again, the bullets didn't pass through the drywall, uh, rushed inside, found him dead, like found him dying, and he died before help could come. But... Uh, and then Sky stepped outside to call for help. Now, she was apparently right outside the door and said she saw no one. But upon Apollo coming in and like finding the body, we hear the door open and close again. Hey there, Lean. Welcome, welcome. 
You would expect that they would have heard the vent. But no, they heard a door open and close. That has not come up. Doing well, Lean. Doing well. Let's see, the air vent is pretty small. Does that prove he was at the scene? No, it doesn't, but it's the prosecution's entire case. And everybody's fine with that. Uh, who was present during the murder? Uh, Apollo, our point of view character. Uh, Detective Sky, who will inevitably show up again. Uh, supposedly another individual. And the singer, Lamoror, was also in the vicinity when the killing happened. Uh, and Lamoror asserts that one of the other band members was in there talking to Latus as well at the time that the killing happened. Did he escape in the time between the gunshots and us opening the door? So, yeah. The murder weapon, which uh, belonged to Mr. Latus. Uh, the one with Ember there, the one laying on her like a pillow, is Sky. He is all cozied up. The thing makes normal revolvers look like water guns. <laughs> Mr. Latus was a big man. Sky and Ember are currently my oldest cats. Sky definitely older than Ember. Sky was my third cat. Um Hey there, Gumi. Good to see you again. Happy you could join us. We are We are in the concert killing of the first of the Apollo Justice trilogy games. How about the person who shot him? Wouldn't they have been about his size? Wouldn't they have to be about his size? Um, they could have been a little shorter. Again, the direction of the bullet wounds implies that uh, since it hit him through the shoulder, like through the shoulder blade, essentially, uh, it looks like it traveled up. While they aim a little high, we'll, we'll pan back over in a moment. So it went through his shoulder blade. So like right through the shoulder blade. If we go back over here. Uh, this one could be the one that went through his shoulder blade and that would put it at about his height. Yeah, I think you're right. I, if this is a miss and this is the hit, the person would likely be shorter. If this is the hit and this is the miss, uh, then about the same height. <laughs> Uh, but if it was Maki, uh, then they would be both up here. <laughs> Based on the impression that we have, uh, Latus was like head and shoulders uh, taller than Lamoror, and Lamoror was around like at least a head taller than Maki, I think. So he is small compared to Latus. It's if this is the hit, then it has to be somebody short. Uh, if this is the hit, then it would be about the same size. I don't think we have anything else there. Not into any sports cat.
uh, the only small person, and another reason that they assert that it must be Maki, well, the only small person is Maki in the group of suspects. As in, Maki is their only suspect, and Maki is short. <laughs> Those permanent dryers you see in hair salons. Is that what they're really called? Permanent dryers? Do I look like a beautician? I just know they dry your hair and give you a permanent... This doesn't sound very glamorous, you know? Okay, how about a per-machine? Or you could go more simple, like a permer. Uh, that one is Sherbet. Ember is like gray and white with, I'm sorry, gray and black on her back with a couple of orange splotches, one being over like one side of her, the back of her head uh, and white socks and underbelly. She has a very distinct coloration. Um, that one is Sherbet, though. Because you can see a whole lot more white, and it's really kind of irregular towards the front. From some angles, it's hard to tell the difference. This isn't a bad game, thinking up official names for things. Not that it makes the name actually official or anything. Go. I, I, I don't want to click. Uh, yes, uh, Sherbet will not allow me to get close enough, uh, like, to approach in a way that would let me hold him in a way to clip his claws. <laughs> it be that way sometimes, Con. That watermelon's holding up pretty well after about a full, at least a full day out in the open with a bite out of it. It's fruit, Apollo. It's fruit. Fruit, Apollo. Fruit. I heard you the first time. There is a lot of fruit. I doubt anyone would miss a bite of watermelon. I know. I'll make it vanish into my stomach. He is not aggressive. Uh, the problem is if he gets scared enough, He's going to either do it accidentally, or if he if he gets really scared enough, he will lash out to try to get you to back off. Um, and since he is full on murder met, uh, that would hurt very much badly. Um, I've gotten sliced by him at least once. Uh, the first time I tried with Sammy, she panicked so much in bits and to enough to bite and cut, so uh, I was bandaged up to the elbows that time. <laughs> there is no trail of blood, Khan, and the fact that Latouse was moved is another reason that Maki shouldn't be the killer, and the fact that Maki was found unconscious on the scaffolding next to Latouse is another reason that I think Maki shouldn't be considered the killer. But what do I know? I'm not a prosecutor in an Ace Attorney game. <laughs> uh, prosecution gets away with whatever they want in an Ace Attorney game. <laughs> Better not. They might make you pay for it. And if you have the money for that, you should probably repaint the office first. Watermelons are that expensive? These could have been imported from some exotic locale for all we know. They might be like those square watermelons. Anyone seen those? They're like 
super special novelty ones that they grow in a way that shapes them into a cube. I think there's also like some, uh, there's also a company out there that makes like cherries that are like palm sized, like strawberries or cherries. Yeah, early, that one. And yeah, cats, they use kind of like a frame. They pick, they pick watermelons that already have like a decent shape and pattern to them. And they fit them carefully in like a rig. Yeah, yeah. Watermelon cubes like in Minecraft. <laughs> and I suppose it additionally like Minecraft and that if you whack them with a pick, you'll probably get watermelon slices or at least slice like pieces. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, Nightmare. So far, the only new thing has been when we looked at the the speaker, they made a big deal of the speaker this time. Uh, the guy was not part of the band. The guy was an interpreter for the guest singer who didn't need an interpreter, who and he was actually an Interpol agent assigned to monitor her. Um, we can't see it now, but there was a, I think that's what this is meant to be. This little square that you can see past the piano. Very faintly, uh, is that there's like a, um, I think it's like a scissor scaffold or something. We have no idea why he would be murdered, Khan. <laughs> Uh, motive has also not been established. But again, Ace Attorney game, a prosecutor said that you are guilty, so you are. And we have to prove not only that he couldn't be the killer, but we also have to prove who was the actual killer, or else Maki is guilty. It is a natural state of cat nightmare to be napping. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna move off to some of these other areas again and see if we get a new flag. So Maki talk to us this time. Stream time is cat nap time. They are actually a lot more active outside of stream time. Uh, by the way, this is Maki. Yeah, you can't really tell by this, but Maki is shorter than Lamorar, who is short, definitely shorter than Latus. Latus is noticeably taller than Lamorar. I have something that could get him to talk. So here we see the bullet in injury. Uh, we see he, he was trying to write his um, this was his uh, Interpol ID number. We don't know if it's true, but apparently Maki doesn't know English, only Borginian. The definitely real country they come from.
no reaction. I think he said, I am sorry I cannot speak your language. You are a fair you are a very beautiful fair maiden. This is why I never trust a translator. <laughs> uh, NPCs have a I don't care about that uh, dialogue that they'll use. Yep, that's his that that is the Maki doesn't care about this evidence statement. Unfortunate. We also didn't get a flag coming in here, so. <laughs> Apparently, Borginian is written in a combination of pseudo Egyptian hieroglyphics and wingdings. We looked at everything here. This is just a place to go. Aren't any... I think you could tell me about this. That is your brooch. That is the brooch that you dropped in the murder scene. When you said you peeked in uh, after initially saying you didn't. I only know what I have heard or felt. Could explain it. About the mixing board. Nope. That this is her I don't care message. Okay, she doesn't care about any evidence that I think we can present to her. Okay, what could we be missing? Let's make sure we click all the things, clear the whole room here. Police uniform hangs on the stand here. I want to try it on. Nothing to see here, move along. It's okay, you don't have to go that far to be special. Uh, in the Phoenix Wright world, in the Ace Attorney game world, Khan, uh, it is perfectly acceptable for the prosecution to withhold evidence to the defense as much as they like, like they might withhold it entirely and never present it to court, uh, or if they do present it, it will be the first time the defense hears about it at all. Uh, additionally, it is perfectly okay for the defense, if they get on a crime scene and aren't observed, to take whatever they want and then subsequently present it in court in the same way that the prosecution is. The difference being, the prosecution can stop you from going in the crime scene. If they want to. Uh, other things that the prosecution is allowed to do... Um, they are allowed to coach witnesses. They are allowed to uh, present witnesses that they that are definitely lying, that they know that they're lying, and that witness is allowed to lie potentially multiple times with the knowledge uh, of the court that they are lying. Like they'll be caught in a lie multiple times in a row, and usually the judge will keep letting them lie. And warning them, well, don't lie again. <laughs> uh, but it won't matter until an arbitrary point. Uh, the prosecution is also allowed to physically assault anyone in the courtroom they want. All of this is perfectly okay. Uh, so far, the suspect... Um, did not react to any of the pieces of data that we showed them. Uh, 
uh, the button is to hold the collar shut. This is an anime style uh, lab coat. Well, most of an anime style lab coat, some part of it. Uh, she is not actually translating Khan. Neither of them knows Borginian. Uh, we also don't know if Maki actually doesn't speak English. Uh, because Lamoror didn't speak English, supposedly. That's what Latouse was posing as, is her translator. But she actually spoke English. It was part of, like, her marketing mystique. You're not the type who's just another face in the crowd. Really? You think so? I guess you're right. I feel like a meanie for making that insinuation. Oh, Drew, uh, Terraria. Um, I have played Terraria before. I don't know that I would stream it. I like Tor I I do like it. It's just that I've played it frequently enough. Like in the past, I played it enough that I don't know that it would hold my interest enough to stream it. That doesn't mean it will never be streamed, but I just don't have any plans for it. That's the legendary AA-400, the Red Badger. I thought Rock was supposed to be rebellious, not civic. Every aspiring guitarist wants one of these. They even paint their own guitars to look like it. The fickleness of youth. You should dye your hair Badger Red, too. I like my hair the way it is, thank you very much. The stubbornness of age. Uh, it does have a bit of that Harlequin look to it. Uh, for those that... Testing. I think it's working again. Annoying. <laughs> I thought I fixed that. Um, let me let me for for science. I'm I'm checking something here. I have a I have a. Uh, filter in my Windows event log. Oh, 
Come on now. Come on. Yeah, there are 423 events. Show me one of them. Hey there, cheese. Yeah, for those that aren't aware, my sound blew out again. It Sometimes I don't notice. Good point. Good point. I wonder if the, this game has somehow contributing to it. Hmm. Okay. Oh, it's not showing me the events. It's taking too loud to load. Lo lo loud. Long to load. So, back in we go. I will. I will endeavor to notice if it if it uh, drops out again. I miss any comments here? Food wise, um, I had a donut. Well, a Bavarian cream, um, what is it called? I think it's a Bismarck. Uh, cheese, this game is Apollo Justice Ace Attorney. Check that. Police recruitment poster doing here. Rock on with the police. Uh, so with the police, and then there's there was another, it's uh it it was along the line of why would somebody uh name a band like law enforcement or something like that? There have been a lot of band puns so far. Uh, this is the band's room. Maybe they're trying to trick kids into thinking the police are some kind of band. There we go. <laughs> There's our joke. But that's just silly. Who'd name a band the police? Ah, Ace Attorney puns. Can't beat them. They just keep getting back up. Place is decorated like a high school dance. Um, recently, my days have been skewed because my sleep schedule is very badly off. Normally, in the mornings, I would do things like video editing, thumbnail creation, um, that kind of thing. And then, uh, then the streams. And that's assuming it's not an off day. I think our decorations were paper, not chains. Gaviniers are into chains. It's part of their image. I mean, I have heard of weirder things that some folks like that turn out to be reasonable. There is a band called The Police, uh, Okineki. That, that's their joke there, is that there is a band called the police. My favorite cat. Um, I can say the sweetest cat is Ember. Uh, 
she is very social. She reacts to her name. Uh, and her vocalization is very cute. She trills. It's the the difference of like the pitch and the the duration tell you what she's trying to convey. No kidding. Ever since they used chains on the cover art for Gonna Lock You Up. Welcome back, Nugget. They're really into the whole police thing, aren't they? It'd be cooler if they turned that red light on. They don't have to turn on the red light. Okay, we have definitely cleared this room. Yeah, Wolf was on earlier. <laughs> uh, this is the scene of the murder cheese. Those are big revolver bullet holes. Something else. All right, cats, you get bad. You you get well. And thanks for joining us, Con. Get that phone recharged. Speaker for the monitoring of the stage. It was blaring at the time of the shooting. Pretty old model for such a nice place. They don't care about sound quality back here as long as you can hear it. Not that a loss of fidelity could possibly make that music worse. Good speakers must cost a lot. You have any idea how much a nice one that size would cost, Apollo? Probably a good ten years of your allowance, give or take. What? That's almost six hundred dollars. Five dollars a month? Poor Trucy. <laughs> Until she finds out you need to buy two speakers for a stereo. Okay, Drew. Thanks for joining us. They found Maki Tobai's fingerprints on the air vent. Okay. I don't recall them mentioning that, but okay. It's with the long face. It's a little lackluster, you know? Lackluster? I mean, using the air vent is so obvious. No audience is going to pay good money to see a trick like that. Beverage. Things must look different through a magician's eyes. It'd be much cooler if the killer got, got out through that tiny window. Go there, you'll get your head stuck. Movie posters, these shouldn't be relevant. That one is Sherbet Okaneki. Is laying his head on the draft excluder that I use as part of the cat barrier. That particular part of the draft excluder keep uh holds them back away from the mouse. It doesn't actually stop Sky. He will drape himself across it so he can reach the mouse. The summer. <laughs> Illegal Eagles production of Case Closed. I looked into that performance group. Turns out they're all law enforcement related too. Apparently their serious portrayal of law and order is a big draw. 
That sounds so boring, it's probably pretty interesting. You're a complicated man, Mr. Apollo Justice. <laughs> a Gaviniers poster. I think it's supposed to be Gaviniers, but I'm going to say Gaviniers because it sounds at least a little better. How many of those did they put up anyway? Prosecutor Gavin looks so cool on stage. You should learn to play a guitar too, Apollo. You can accompany my magic act. It'd certainly be a novelty act, if nothing else. I'll think about it if I ever lose my attorney's badge. Stack of presents for Lamorar. Stars always get the biggest presents. You know, you could give me a present, Apollo. Here, have a piece of candy. <laughs> Gee, thanks. She must not get a lot of presents. Poor girl. Eats candy. Okay, we, we, have, we have clicked all the things. Oh, no, and click the TV, too. One of the biggest, most expensive-looking TVs I've ever seen. Too bad you'll, you'll never own one. Wow, harsh. See? <laughs> never is kind of harsh, Trucy. How about for all eternity, then? Not really any different. Same difference. <laughs> right after the shooting took place, Lamoror tried to come into the dressing room and dropped her brooch. I think that fits with the other stuff we know. Do you think the timing when she dropped it is important? Yeah, something about it bugs me, that's for sure. Can we now ask Lamoror more about the brooch that she refused to acknowledge previously? Let's find out. Nope. This is the this is a circumstance you can get into in Apollo Justice games or in Ace Attorney games is there is something they want you to present or to show a person, uh, but it's not clear what. Uh, once we are firmly in that point, I will look up what we're supposed to do next to keep moving it along. I try to avoid that, though. Gonna save here. Very, very. All right. Thanks for joining us. She's. this one. Uh, and 
that one. Uh, we we are giving up, so we are checking here. Seriously? Better not be it. That would be super annoying. Let's find out. So there's something that I was going to mention earlier as the reason that I never I, I never talked to her here. And that's because usually this yields zero results. Like, it's supposed to be, hey, give me some clues on what to do next. And they say the same thing no matter what. Uh, no matter what trial it is. So you never speak to them. Supposedly, this is what we've been missing. Which would be super annoying. Because it is another thing that is inconsistent. Uh, this happened once before. This kind of thing happened once before in one of the Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney trials where uh, normally uh, when you get a statement right, when you're, you're making a challenge, the music stops to confirm you said the right thing. There is one instance in the Ace Attorney trilogy for Phoenix Wright that... That isn't true. Instead, the music continues and the statements that they make are almost identical to a wrong answer until like the third sentence or something like that. So if you've been guessing wrong multiple times uh, and getting the same, you got it wrong and they're about to like smack you and, uh, you know, you want to reload. Uh, it will look like there's no answer. So yeah, frustrating, but that's why we look things up when we reach this point. Lamoror dropped a bomb in court today. It was Dari. Lamoror said she'd never forgotten a voice, right? That's so cool. I guess. What's that called again? Elephant ears? I bet that's what they're called. Somehow I don't think that means what you think it means. Inconceivable. And she has to be wrong this time. Wrong? Why? I mean, look. Those gunshots were right during the concert. That's right. I was burning up the dance floor at the time. Right. Did you happen to look up on stage? Maybe at Darian, even? You bet I did. He's one of the Gavineers' lead... Uh, guitarist, after all. He's so cool. Oh. Right. All the Gavineers have... All the Gavineers have a rock-solid alibi. He couldn't have shot Mr. Latouse backstage. Uh, so here's an interesting thing. Uh, what if... the timing of the killing is different? Like... There's a lot of emphasis, like they've shown us several times that uh, there's audio equipment that can separate out sounds and that there, it was very loud inside of the both those rooms. So is it possible that the gunshot sound was uh, was played into the rooms uh, during an event, but it was the timing was different? such that the original gunshot happened at a different time, and it was muffled, but then they play gunshot sounds over the speakers to get people's attention. He couldn't have shot Mr. Latouse backstage, but Lamoror heard him, didn't he? She heard Darian backstage, right? 
Somebody's either wrong or lying very badly here. An Interpol agent. I was wondering, what is Interpol anyway? Interpol? They're the guys who catch international criminals. Why can't they just call them International Police instead of making up some silly name? Yeah, anyway. You think he was investigating Lamoror? Uh, why would anyone do that? She's not a criminal. She couldn't be. Don't be fooled by appearances is all I'm saying. Remember, I'm a magician, Apollo. I can spot a palmed coin at 50 paces. If only it were that easy. In any case, we know he was working on something. I wonder if it was something that had something to do with something. That something being our case, the last something, I mean. Something like that. <laughs> Frankly, the whole thing is making my head hurt. What was Mr. Latouse up to? Yeah. This is what we were missing. This never happens. <laughs> what we're doing right now never happens. You don't talk to your assistant in the main room because they just tell you you're supposed to go look at other places. Somebody laughs. Percy, was that another one of your tricks? It wasn't me. I can't even make Mr. Hat laugh like that. Mr. Hat is her rapidly deploying uh, wooden mannequin that uh, pops out from under her cape and at the same time takes her cape and hat. She used it to uh, kidnap herself in a prior trial to delay things. This is a guy we saw in the hallway uh, while we were doing the initial investigation. He kind of appeared and blew past us. Wherever the mundane gives way to miracles, a word is whispered. Gra Let's see. That looks like grammary. Hey, the other day... They saw him briefly, like he ran through. So... He has the same kind of, again, cape, top hat, uh, and a uh, card suit brooch. So we can see who I assume is Trucy's original parent with a club brooch. She has, um, I think she has diamonds. Uh, she calls Phoenix her, her father, but that doesn't line up. She is an adoptive daughter for sure. As in, uh, Phoenix isn't her biological father, as it were. Meet again. Uh, nice to meet you. Who are you? And could you please stop smirking like that? A professional smirk. He has to practice that. It's you, Uncle Valent. Said Valent. I'm gonna say Valent. Uncle Valent? He's your, he's your uncle? No, silly. It's the great Grammary. Valent Grammary. Hey there, Fraggy. Welcome. How you doing? So it is I, the great Valent Grammary, as seen on television. And could you please stop smirking like that? It's been a while, Miss Trucy. Seven years, to be exact. Hey there, Natalie. Welcome to the broadcast. Having a good day so far. Having a good day so far. Trying to stay hydrated here. Great 
try. Hi, how you've grown. We're playing an Ace Attorney game, so there will be a lot of reading, but that also gives me plenty of time to chat. So don't worry about interrupting. Good to see you again, Uncle Valent. You look exactly the same. I hate to intrude, but uh, what is a great magician doing paying us a visit? I believe it was you who wished to see me. So be quick with your questions. Well, that was a nice little twirl. Hey there, painful. One would assume that pineapples can commonly be painful. Do not quail, quake, or quiver. I am quite tame. Though my stardom may sear sight, I'm quite down to earth when it when the need calls. Uh, we are playing a game called, uh, well, that is part of the Apollo Justice Ace Attorney trilogies. Trilogy. We are in the midst of the third case. He does have a certain aura to him, it's true. Let's ask him about the case, Apollo. His aura sure isn't lost on our magician in the making. He's practically drooling with enthusiasm. After all, Uncle Valen's one of Daddy's best friends. That's why I call him Uncle. You mean Mr. Wright? No, I mean my real dad. Again, that's got to be her... Yeah, this is the first time she's mentioned this. Lucy's real father? Gasp! Nobody's shocked. Uh, Phoenix would have been like... At most, at most co in college... Uh, when Trucy would have been uh, conceived. And at the time, Phoenix was completely smitten, like, rapidly chasing after a, uh, like, full Black Widow femme fatale who had no real interest in him. Like, she was completely platonically stringing him along. Uh, for that would be around Trucy would have where Trucy would have had to be conceived, and it definitely wasn't with that particular woman. Um, so, yeah, it, it, she wasn't Phoenix's daughter. <laughs> hey there, Nah. We're doing good. And hello, Bew. Or is it, it's Bo, right? Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Wait, Apollo... Don't tell me you don't know about troop, troop grammary. Troop grammary, huh? No. Oh, they gave us a uh, a pronunciation guide. What's that? Ask away. But it does sound kind of familiar. Lost life, lamentably listless lad. Do not know of the greatest troop of magicians on the planet. Malik Grammary. The name began to surface in my mind. It was a name I'd heard on television as a child. You bet I, you've heard the name. He made a cruise ship disappear and blew up an amusement park. <laughs> so, you know, it is kind of interesting when you can think that the the uh, the accomplishments of a Kind of myth, myth, the the mythical stage magician, line up very well with the accomplishments of a uh, a terrorist. <laughs> you know, made major monuments and buildings vanish, blew things up, cut people in half. Context is everything. <laughs> And again, Bo, if uh, I don't know if you heard, but, you know, feel free to ask questions. Oh, and he made all the gold disappear from a safe. Yeah, yeah. And then escaped from a high-security prison. 
Um, he said he's a magician. I opened the locks to hearts chained by mediocrity. <laughs> this is the true mi miracle of true grammar. Wait. What, Apollo? I do remember seeing you on television a long time ago. Weren't you with someone else like a duo? A duo? Yeah, you had a partner. Something Grammary? Yes, Zach. Zach Grammary. A masterful maker of magic, a capable crafter of shining showmanship. There's a whole lot of consonants going on here. Why is everyone so quiet? Oh, no way. Once upon a time, Troop Grammary included two Grand Magicians. The little cane twirl he does is kind of impressive. Um, see, when he flips it down, it actually rotates around his whole arm. Like, midpoint rotates. It's not that he's spinning the head of the cane in his hand. He is rotating the cane around his arm. Self Valent Grammary and Zach Grammar. And this Zach was. He was my real daddy. Brucey's father, a magician. I guess it makes sense. I had no idea. There wasn't much point in talking about it, not now that he's gone. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay, I'm not lonely. Got my daddy after all. And <laughs> you make me laugh, Apollo. Glad that I'm good for comic relief, at least. Not that I see Daddy around much these days. Been remiss in remembering my reasons for my visit. Reasons? Two, in fact. The first being, of course, to see you, Miss Trucy. Don't know how happy I am to see you again, Uncle Valent. I'm sure you are. Not one for modesty, are you? When I encountered you at the Colosseum the first time in seven years, I could feign not contain my emotions. I wept oceans. Yeah, he does a lot of rhyming. So we've got a lot of consonants. We just had a full-on rhyme there. And to learn you now defend that poor pianist, that blinded boy. Hey there, mafioso. Welcome. Welcome back. It was a hot topic of talk amongst the staff, you know. And defend him you did. Well, it wasn't all my doing. Uh, I'm his defense attorney, actually. My other reason for coming here today was this. That's a uh, videotape. Just a moment. Wait, so, a recording of the concert, no less. I brought it to you, to you, Trucy, on behalf of Troop Grammary. Will you watch it? So this is the, uh... Uh, the song that was supposedly happening at around the same time. Uh, that was Maki playing piano. I mean, bilingual is bilingual, Okaneki.
So very shortly, his guitar is going to burst into flames. There we go. And that's already, uh, I mean, that's already a solid thing to have. Okay, that's, that's one thing we could see is that there is a hatch in each of those platforms. Now, the first platform I thought was like a scissor lift, so we have, we have lost kitty cat. There's a reasonable portion of sky. Almost as good as it was live. So what's the word? Mysterious? There are more mysterious things than her song going on. Way more mysterious. Laugh. This valent Grammary has good reasons to be here today, but I wonder what his reasons were to be at that concert. Yeah, so scissor lift, even though there's a hatch in it, there's not really anywhere to be hiding in it, you know? Checking something here. She doesn't have her brooch at this point. see when she reappears on the other side. I want to see if we can get a good look. Yeah, no brooch. So, um, either the implication is that she managed to run all the way around and come out here, but that's not really a lot of time. Uh, alternately, that the first one is a fake, and that the second one is actually her. That would mean that um, during the concert, essentially, she wasn't present until towards, uh, like, after where they seem to claim it, it had happened. Or something like that. Okay. Let's hit detention center here. Does he care about this? He don't care about that. But we have a new piece of evidence that we didn't. So we're going to try to go and throw that at uh, Lamarar next. We took a look at your performance again. It was even better the second time. Thank you. That reminds me. That was an incredible illusion you pulled off. Illusion? When you teleported from one stage to the other, remember? Ah, yes. Apparently they hired a professional magician. Valent Grammary. I was wondering, do you think you could tell us how it was done? I'm afraid I cannot. Mr. Grammary made me swear to never tell a soul. I was afraid of that. Hard to be a magician if you can't keep a secret, you know. Pen and Teller would beg to differ. 
I am reminded that I wish to speak to you about something. Yes? When I was walking this hallway before, I stumbled upon a small device of some kind. It was lying on the floor. Device? You mean this? It's been lying there since the day before yesterday. Might I touch it? I thought as much. What did you think? This is one of our headsets. Everyone on staff wears one during a concert. I wonder whose this is. We use it for communication. It would be quite inconvenient should it go missing. We'll hold on to it for you then. So, at all points in the investigation, that earpiece has been there, and we've been able to look at it, and they've commented on it being there since the day of the investigation, and we haven't been able to do anything with it until she said, oh, that's an earpiece. We use those for communication. Uh, like, yeah, yeah, that's what an earpiece is for. The presence of it sitting there in the middle of a hallway is, quest is, is an oddity even before she confirms it. We'll give it to Prosecutor Gavin when we see him. Uh, that's best, thank you. So can I put it on? Patched? I'm not some kind of robot, Apollo. Everyone on staff was wearing one of these headsets. This might warrant some further inquiry. And for that, little buddy, this is Trucy reporting in. Over. Why the sudden silence? No one answered. Don't be silly. What good is a receiver that doesn't receive? It's like Emma not performing forensic investigations. You make her sound like she's some kind of forensic investigation machine. Which is just silly. Unless she's a super high-tech android that runs on snackoos. Hmm. Given the amount of them that she consumes on camera, I mean, it feels kind of plausible. Double check real quick ask you about this headset, Lamar. You said that all concert staff were wearing one? That's correct. You need them to communicate across such a large stage. Everyone on staff had one, of course, and all of the band members, too, I should think. So Prosecutor Gavin and his lackeys had them on, too. Then, they're quite helpful, though limited. They only work within 30 feet or so. After all, they're only for use on stage, and a stronger signal would interfere with the sound system. That makes sense. You'd think someone would notice if they dropped their only communications lifeline. So why was this one lying here? Okay. No new flag here. Uh... If there's going to be new information available in a room, when you enter it, you'll get the typed out room name again. Assuming they don't pull a fast one on us again in this one. Such as now. This is the sign that there's something new here. Well, the, the sound of munching is uh, the presence of Emma Sky and her infinite bag of uh, chocolate-covered snacks. Uh-oh. There's only one person I know that can munch with such venom. What are you doing here? Hello, Emma. You're looking as grumpy as ever. Oh, am I supposed to be happy? Give me the second degree in court and Prosecutor Gavin makes me look like a fool. You're talking about the blood stain Mr. Latus left? My department chief had a field day with that one. Even a blind person could see the shooter wasn't blind. Funny guy, huh? 
that Bloodstain helped uncover the biggest mystery of all. Uh, they had not they had not verified or confirmed that Maki couldn't could actually see until after Emma had been brought uh, like brought up to the witness stand for the first time, and then they decided not to tell her. She resents this. Bloodstain helped uncover the biggest mystery of all. That's one of the things that they called out, is that uh, initially the defense assertion was that Latouse was trying to write something and that the shooter scrubbed it out. Um, and we were able to see what was scrubbed out, but the prosecution then springs on us the fact that Maki isn't actually blind and thus could have seen it and known to scrub it out. Uh, and that is what uh, Emma is upset about, is that she was the one that had marked the assertion that... Uh, well, she was the one that that threw things off on. You know, knowing that would have let her make a better assertion during the trial because she was she was buying along in with the defense assertion that Maki couldn't have wiped it out. Now we know that Mr. Latouse was really with Interpol. We wouldn't have found that that out without you. I suppose maybe that's why the chief gave me these after he was finished chewing me out. Said it was my reward. Are chocolate snackoos popular at the precinct or something? I was hoping we could check out the crime scene again. You might guess you're not going to find any clues in here. But I did find something strange. Something strange. I met my embarrassment quota for the year, that's for sure. That's a good thing, isn't it? How? I mean, think about it. Now you don't have to be embarrassed about anything else all year. <laughs> that's a spin on it. That's a spin. The, uh... You've been embarrassed enough for the whole year uh, and taking it as I will not be embarrassed anymore this year. If only it worked that way. It just bugs me to think that little kid that little kid outsmarted me. And it makes him even more suspicious now that we know he can see. He could have seen the air duct, and he could have shot that revolver. That's not how it sounded in Lamoror's testimony. You mean her saying she heard Detective Darian's voice at the scene? Hmm. That's right. Why can't we have a normal, straightforward killing once in a while in this country? Just straight-up murder. Can we have a straight-up murder for once? Just, you know... Guy walks down the street, fully in public view, shoots somebody. Now let's have some more of that, apparently. It'd be like that sometimes, Naruto. It'd be like that. We continue on. Oop. Stream is not ending. Hit the wrong button. a milder form of scuff than we're used to, at least. Is that true, what you said in court today? You know, about the case? About how everything was happening according to those song lyrics? The guitar serenade, you mean? I found the link, you know. Yeah, 
the uh, it does line up with how the song actually went. Uh, saying that the events, like guitar lights on fire, uh, you know, somebody is shot and died. Uh, and then subsequently, uh, Maki Latusa's body and one of the guitars from the stage is lifted up into the air on a platform. So post-murder. He went up into the sky with a guitar. Well, 15 feet at least. Kind of hard to chalk it up, it up to coincidence. I know, and I found it. Think the same person did all this? Don't ask me, I didn't do it. Here's an interesting thought. If Maki legitimately cannot speak or even read English, then how would Maki know unless he was told the contents of the song? Because Maki didn't uh, write the lyrics. Lamoror and Gavin are the ones that wrote the lyrics. If he only had the sheet music, then he couldn't necessarily know what the song is at all. So wouldn't know, like, wouldn't know to alter the crime scene to match the song. Well, it's me, I didn't do it. Neither did I. I couldn't fit through that air vent anyway. What? You all think I did it? Sometimes I worry about that girl. <laughs> So, what did you find? It's so little, I must have passed over it yesterday. I found it under the sofa. A little tank. Looks like a little kind of gas tank. Hey there, Yasin. Welcome to the broadcast. We're playing some Apollo Justice Ace Attorney trilogy. Kinda casual. Under, under the sofa. What is it? Some part of some device, I think. I haven't a clue what. The bit sticking out from the end looks familiar, so I had it examined. Turns out it's an antenna. Like on a beetle? Like on a cell phone. This device must use an electronic signal of some sort. It can be. It's interactive fiction, so it's like... Uh, a light novel where you have to participate more. That's a very strange circumstance, Naruto. I, you know, it's kind of confounding that Twitch won't let you sign in. <laughs> Electronic signal, you say? So one of the things, we found the earpiece in the hallway. An earpiece on the floor that is only supposed to have a 30-foot range for communication on stage. And they made a point to tell us that a stronger signal nearby would override the base signal. So, if we have a wireless antenna under the couch uh, in the murder room, maybe that wireless antenna did something to um, both the earpiece signal but I wonder if it required Detective Sky to go further away from the room in order to get cell reception to call in more uh, more help. Because that would have given somebody time to flee when Apollo entered the room and was distracted by the corpse. No, that's, uh, I don't care.
we're going to sweep the immediate area and see if we get another flat. Uh, we detect another flag raised. Okay, so I'm. Let's head back to Maki uh, at the uh, detention center, see if we can get a change there. presented that to him, but... Alright, nothing new there, and frankly, if it didn't pop up the new flag thing, then... For a miracle, then wish be granted that I will be done, thy evidence evicted into the ether. No evicting, please. Make my evidence vanish. Um. No, I'm not sure. I don't know if they have a... I don't... I'm not aware that they instituted, like, a 18 and older policy. For uh, for viewership, I mean, it's, you're you're supposed to be 18 or older to stream. to the not this one back into the murder room Just checked. So one possibility is that somebody's hearing uh, was messed up uh, by the presence of the microphone. I'm sorry, the transmitter. Like, they were walking by, and because that thing was under the couch, either it was uh, jamming their stage mic, or, um, you know, maybe it was providing lots of interference. stage. Oh, I wonder if we can tell him, or we can ask him about the trick. Just wondering, that stunt in the middle of the song there. I didn't see a stunt. What about Lamorar vanishing and reappearing? Oh, that? I guess I'm used to seeing that happen. I didn't even notice. So young to be so jaded. A simple sleight of hand, a petite prestidigitation. A modicum of magic from me to you. That's why you were at the concert. Yes. I was there to watch my trick take to the air. 
they're the one who knows how it was all done. Doing well, Kano. The, uh, this is the Apollo Justice Ace Attorney trilogy. It's a little bit of interactive fiction. Uh, really soap opera level, melodramatic, like, uh, Japanese, uh, courtroom drama. <laughs> if you've ever seen the, seen the memes of somebody, like, slamming a desk, pointing and shouting, objection. Uh, or, you know, with a guy in a blue suit and a maroon suit. Uh, that's from these games. Of course, I'm like a deity with the stage as my domain. I suffer no mystery upon those fl floodlit boards not grasped tightly twixt my fingers. Like it's been charging for that long, Okaneki? Well, that... Uh, I wonder if it needed a full charge to get fr to do charge from zero and kind of fully boot. Is a potent primeval power I possess. Uh, well, do you think you could tell me how it was done? Hey now, Trucy. That's, like, totally against the rules, Apollo. Not during a murder investigation, it's not. <laughs> None, for my illusions are mine alone. <laughs> sure. It's also, also what? Recall that the terrible occurrence happened later. Well, after my illusion entrains the audience. So, we know that Lamoror... Uh, was had visited the room and apparently heard the killing before his illusion took place because she doesn't have the brooch on the other side of the room. So the actual uh, the actual Lamoror, there's a fake on the one side who I think, if I had to guess, drops into a hatch that is located on the scissor lift. Uh, whereas the other person rises out of the hatch on the other one, the other side is actually Lamoral. Now, alternately, the real one dropped down, but there's nowhere that she wouldn't have been seen on the scissor lift, so. So this guy has just made himself fantastically suspicious. Like, all of the sucks. Don't even ask. I won't answer. Too bad for you, Apollo. Whose side are you on? I, Valent Grammary, now take, take my leave, Miss Trucy. Hey there, Anelia. Is it Anelia? Anelia feels more right. Welcome to the broadcast. No need to rush, Uncle Valent. You should stay in you should stay a while. I'm afraid I cannot. I may not. I shall not. I've been asked to assist with an analysis, and so I shall slink back to the scene. So you'll be at the concert venue today? Correct. If you would call on me, come to the Coliseum. Really likes that cane twirl. See you later, crocodile. Um, the that the call and response is later, alligator, and see you in a wild crocodile kind of thing. A whirl of his cloak and a wink of his eye, he turned and walked out through the door. Normally. <laughs> There you go, Apollo. Let's get cracking. Right. Alec Grammary had a few more things to ask him. Foremost among them, that bit of magic that made Lamoror disappear. I'm doing well, Anelia. I'm doing well. It has been a 
pretty good day so far. And we made it way further into the game than uh, than we did on the last Ace Attorney stream. Wait, you're so man, even the even the catches on the, the Joy-Con uh, things are broken. Wow. You know, I I can't say it was intentional there, Okaneki, but uh, something really messed your uh, switch up. <laughs> ah, so maybe it sent a confirmation email to the wrong account. Now he knows Trucy and her real father. Yeah. Uh, switches and tablets are... I mean, they're thin enough. They're 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 packed in enough that they would be very impact vulnerable. Okay, so let's see. If I had to guess, the magician is going to be on stage. That song, isn't that the one Lamoror was singing? Hey, you're right, the guitar is Serenade. Love to do a show on a stage like this. I'd come to see that. The house is full and is one. The audience sighs with wonderment. There I am, singing my ballad, rose petals swirling through the air. Not bad. Wait, aren't you a magician? Oh, that's right. I was a magician, wasn't I? Some dedication. Isn't Miss Trucy, and indeed it is. Uncle Valent. What exactly are you doing here? I presume some autocorrect. Uh, for me, it is about uh, 6.30. A little before. Still got at least uh, probably another half hour or so. But in any event, welcome to the channel, Jacko. I take real responsibility in tasks undertaken. I'm inspecting my equipment of illusion to make sure naught is amiss. The Lamoror telep teleportation illusion. Ooh. Should anything go wrong, it would reflect poorly upon me and my troop. As I went about my exacting examination, I happened to notice that piano... And I remembered that fair lady's melancholy melody. Hey, Apollo, maybe Uncle Valent can shed some light on this whole thing for us. I was wondering about the show the night of the murder. Lamoror's vanishing act was your illusion, right? Indeed, the purple prosecutor petitioned my performance. At the climax of the song, he said, make her disappear, like a dream. Like a dream. Yet, what can I work on? What can I work with on a stage meant for musical endeavors?
there are none of the conveniences of a stage built for sorceress acts. It was a challenging task, and so I accepted. Oh, that's a lot of white. Oof. My eyes. I mean, there's there's a non-trivial uh, possibility that one, it might have gotten further damaged when it was uh, idle. Like you know, there could be there could be damage from the dropping that was made worse in the interim. Uh, it's possible that the downtime was enough to, uh, like something further happened within in general. Like maybe the battery is. Uh, has suffered. Any number of things, you know, give it some time. Maybe it just needs uh, longer. Now, because of the murder, all eyes of the nation are on this concert. Not a bad thing as far as the fortunes of Troop Grammary are concerned. So you're here checking up on your trick to make sure it went well. And went well it did. Now, speaking of pianos. That piano over there troubles me. It troubles you? Why? Why do you ask why? I think it's probably quicker if I just go check it out myself. Thanks. I know what you're thinking in that head of yours. Grammary, yes, you say. I recall seeing him on television. something of that sort? Uh, actually, yes, you're right. Wow, he read your mind, Apollo. Or everyone tells him that, and he made a good guess. It was 20 years ago. A young magician, a genius of his time, came down among us. His name was Magnifi Grammary. was he who began the great troop Grammary. Now, setting aside the animals balanced in that fashion, um, that kind of Y-shaped stick that he's got his elbow on, uh, usually it, the stick is off to the side. There's a classic um, fake levitation thing that people will do where it looks like they're like sitting cro cross-legged in the air uh, with only a cane held off to the side in their hand. Uh, and the trick goes that you have... The cane is actually like a metal post embedded down into the ground. And the... Uh, a, a support structure extends out, like either concealed under a, a... like a draped sleeve or in the sleeve, over through into a suspended platform like, attached to that metal structure that the person actually sits on. Which is also concealed by, like, you know, aesthetics robes kind of stuff. It has that vibe, but, um, I don't get the, uh, the structure of, of that right there. Uh, for the same trick, what you'd have is you'd have the cane coming up in this platform, and perhaps, like, extending through the coat or similar um, or behind the cloak, that kind of thing. You have a platform that he's actually attached to or similar. Stuff and things. At his prime, not a day passed that he did not play upon the screens of every TV there was. It was the mutton chops. That's, that's what really made his whole act if it weren't for that that full bushy facial hair, he just wouldn't have carried the whole image. It's come a long way. Stage magician traditions have changed quite a bit. Now you just need a well-groomed moustache. As demonstrated by uh, Valent here. That's why Trucy hasn't ascended to his level. 
Her mustache hasn't grown in yet. Several years ago, that time came to an end. My troop pulled a vanishing act. Yes. Prize for magic no longer heard. The TV screen, a barren waste, stripped of illusion. That's not true. I still went to all your shows. Like that one in the parking lot down at the supermarket. <laughs> That's not true. You haven't fallen from grace. You know, loss of TV isn't such a big deal. You still had that show down at the supermarket in the parking lot. You're still famous. Um, yeah, there's some other folks in that chat. Welcome back. When you start playing in supermarket parking lots, you know you're in trouble. We hone our skills at these small venues, always awaiting our time. Yes, one day we will rise up from obscurity unto fame's shining stage once more. Uh, you know, if you're not feeling well, take whatever time you need to get better. That's the more important thing. Always the more important thing. Or at least it should be. And despite what employers will often try to get you to believe. I do this not only for magic, that is Grammarie, but for my partner. Partner? You mean... Yes, Zach Grammarie. Trucy's father. Sky is very fluffy. Very, very fluffy. It's not like uh, dandelion fluff, but his hair sticks out like that on the, the sides and underbelly. Uh, it lays a little more flat on his back. A little coarser there. Paws, sides, underbelly, he's he is fluff. Before he disappeared seven years ago, there was no name higher than Grammarie in show business circles. None. World world point. I will see us return to glory. I valent Grammarie. Uh, we made progress. The The sticking point was apparently an operation that we've pretty much never had to do in an Ace Attorney game. Which was why we hadn't done it yet. Our founder, Magnifi Grammarie, was truly a genius, a worker of miracles. Never forget that, the one I saw when I was little. Oh, he made that whole jumbo jet go... Uh, what happened to the jet again? Apparently someone doesn't remember it as well as they thought. Of all the would-be magicians who came to his door, only Zack and I had the talent. It's like he has a gold pistol in his little... Like, that's very much a, like, a uh, holster belt there. Especially how it hangs to the side. He has a, he has something hefty in the holster. And it looks like a gold pistol. <laughs> in no time at all, Valent and Zack were the shining stars of the Grammarie crown. Cool, huh? And Zack Grammarie was my daddy. Oh, we're not finishing the game today at all. Oh, man. Uh, this is the first game in a three-game set, uh, which is encompassed in a single game on Steam currently. Get like a three-in-one jobby. Uh, and there's going to be at least, I think, two more trials in this one. Usually there's like four or five, somewhere in that range. <laughs> Now that Magnifi and Zack are gone, I have but one wish. 
happen to be I, Valent Grammary, who brings the Grammary's back the miracle, the Grammary miracle, back to the big stage. I'm rooting for you. <laughs> Miss Trucy, you cannot grow up quick enough. I need your skill by my side. One skill coming up. Would you like fries with your skill? How do we manage to get off the topic of the case so, so quickly all the time? What about the piano? One big piano. I've never actually played one. You should get Mr. Wright to teach you sometime. No good. He can't play either. I'm going to feel bad for the guy now. Maybe now's my big chance. Stand back. This could be the debut of a prodigy. You. Did you make that noise now? Well, let me try again. Like a clack at the end. No, I think something's stuck in the piano. Time to take a look under the hood. Huh. So it's stuck between the strings. That's got a real detonator vibe to it, doesn't it? Hey there, Toko. Yep, uh, that one is Sky. Let's see who else is around since he just uh, wandered off on us. See, Ember is sleeping over on the shelf. You can actually get a really good view of her on that one. And then that looks like Sherbet uh, on the bed. Sherbet and Sammy. Let's actually, I almost never get to use the shelf cam. Yeah. that. <laughs> they are little sweeties. Ember and Sammy in particular are very, like, snuggly. They'll come over and sit on my lap. Ember, Ember wants very active attention and will kind of crawl up you. Sammy just likes to sit on your lap and get back scratches. Mason will come over too, but... It's he's still trying to figure out how to request the attention he wants and how to like position for it. Uh, so once he does, like he'll need it, he'll he'll stand on your lap and like need his paws for a little bit. And then he climbs over and like presses his belly up your your body so he can drape on your shoulder a bit and have his back stroke stroked that way. Uh it can be a competitive space, so the way Ember likes to sit, if Sammy comes down to sit, she will bump into Ember, and Ember doesn't like to be bumped into by the other cats, so she'll run off. Um, if Mason comes over and tries to walk through, he walks over both of their spots and will drive them both off. was stuck between the strings. It looks like some kind of switch. Someone must have thrown this into the piano. <laughs> um, it was a joke I once made. Uh, I counted up the general weight of all of my cats, and I told folks that I had over 50 pounds of cat. That was when I just had the two Maine Coon brothers. They were both kind of in that general vicinity. As far as uh, that 40 to 50.
switch sitting here, tempting me to push it. Don't. You might blow up the whole Colosseum. Apollo, please. To think that every strange switch triggers a bomb. That kind of old-fashioned crime drama thinking doesn't cut it in our busy times. All right, Trucy P.I., please enlighten me. What do you think this switch does? Uh, in this particular trial, maybe 30 to 50 percent, uh, at most 60, uh, then within the whole game, we might be nearing the halfway mark within this part, this part of the whole game, of the whole trilogy. Hmm. Maybe it turns on the electric razor in Prosecutor Gavin's dressing room. A switch as big as a razor to turn on a razor. Okay. <laughs> These can be pretty long. Uh, I am looking to dabble in some other games in the near future. We have been primarily playing this kind of game for a bit. Maybe it's time to uh, change the games up. Looking at adding like two to three days of gaming during the weeks, break up the programming a little bit more and uh, alternate, you know? For the time being, little bursty experiences, small games, so that we can just get through stuff. Hey there, Daniel. Welcome to the broadcast. I believe we found Maki and Mr. Latus up on top of that tower. Yeah, I used to not like the like high places. Now I hate them. Well, that reminds me, Daddy's bad with heights too. Yeah, no kidding. He took me on a Ferris wheel ride a while ago, you know. Halfway through, his face got all green, and he mumbled objection over and over. Playing Apollo Justice Ace Attorney. A very interactive fiction kind of thing. Poor guy. Okay, I think we're, we're going to hop to some different locations here. gonna present her with this switch. You think you could take a look at this? Small device, looks like a transmitter. <laughs> well. Oh, Daniel, uh, we're not done with it yet. Figured we'd take a little bit of a gaming break. Uh, we played a Chilla's Art game yesterday and we're getting a little bit of Ace Attorney in. We're going to have uh, some more coding on Friday and Sunday. Uh, last we had, we fixed a couple of bugs. So we've got uh, targeting and object spawning and movement working fully at the moment. So we'll probably... In the near future, I want to get some more sprites working, so we might have a sprite art day or so. See how that goes. I want to get a battery of them and start thinking about some uh, some more visuals. Maybe spin off of that. Transmitter. You press this switch here, and it sends out a signal. No idea what it's for, though. A signal. You mean an electronic signal? What is it, Apollo? Say, Emma. You know that strange object you said you found? Oh, this? Let me try pressing this switch. Oh, okay. This is the thing that lit um, Gavin's guitar on fire during the, the stage show. 
yeah, that's what I. So they said the the big uh, like the thing sticking out was a transmitter. They must mean this part is the transmitter, the kind of brownish thing. Uh, this I I had thought really did look like a little uh, like a little gas cylinder or something like that, you know, a small fuel tank. Uh, so in that little prong sticking out very much, it is a it is a little small torch. Now for it to burst into flames on that circuit board, it. This thing feels like you could use it maybe once or twice <laughs> before wrecking the board. It's the big idea. Well, now we know what this is, an igniter. This part here must work like a lighter. beverage. Dota 2, I do not currently play it uh, a while ago, like years and years ago. I did play Dota 2. It can be interesting with friends, and I do like seeing that they have simplified some of the more arcane things that were in the game. The alter the alterations to the leveling system were kind of nice. Uh, it continues to be, as far as major ones, uh, the MOBA with the highest learning curve. Like, an almost vertical learning curve at, uh, very early into it. I think, like, it'd be skill design wise, I think they've got some things that are a lot cooler than what we see in League of Legends. League of Legends continues to be the one that is more accessible. Dota has a better business model as far as avoiding the FOMO uh, aspect of new characters. Instead, they rely entirely on, like, the loot box kind of thing, which is still bad, but not as bad as gating the champions behind that kind of thing as well. Yep, they do use some, uh, they use wingdings for gibberish in, uh, some Undertale stuff. Uh, nothing is tomorrow, cats. Thursday is an off day. Someday might dust it off again. Uh, not really an intense MOBA guy, but, um, uh, Uh, Friday is coding. Friday and Sunday are coding. I don't know what we're going to play on Saturday, but it will be a game. You don't look at me like that. I didn't do it on purpose, I suppose. <clears throat> At least we're getting somewhere with this case. Like I said, don't know what we're playing on Saturday, but it will be a game. Follow. let's ask Emma more about this switch. Now that she's got some first-hand experience. Usually Monday and Thursdays are off days. Hero shooters kind of fall into the same category as uh, MOBAs for me. Not really interesting. Like, they're not bad. I mean, I get why people like them, but eh. What are you trying to do burn me alive? 
Come on, it was just a few sparks. Says you, you weren't the one holding it. There's enough sparks flying around here just with you two talking. Anyway, now we know this is a remote for an igniter. Let me see that for a second. Well, well, this is definitely a little transmitter. The signal's weak, probably only reaches 30 feet. Okay, and they mentioned that the range of the, uh, the earpieces is about 30 feet. I wonder if one of the headsets was affected by the transmitter going off. Transmitter, huh? Incidentally, if you look at a cross-section diagram of the stage area, thirty feet from Lamorora's dressing room, covers the backstage completely. It also looks like it would cover the stage. It kind of seems unlikely anyone would use... Scratchy hmm. throat today. Seems unlikely anyone would use this on stage. Okay. Guess I'd best be getting on with my investigation. We're off to look for more clues elsewhere, then. Feel better just knowing what this thing is now. I'll have to look into igniters a bit more later. <laughs> Good luck. I'd like to know a bit more about igniters myself. All right. Take a look at some of these. Yeah, you've got like a little fuse here. Little parts. It's pretty complex. Yeah. Little ignition fuse, this part spins and creates the spark. It is, this is, it's kind of like a Zippo, you know? I mean, supercharged given the size of the flames that came out of it. This is where the flames came out. Other than that, good thing machines run even if we don't know how they work. Yeah, you can see some of the markers that indicate, like, oh, it's a circuit board right under the venting for the heat. Not really a thing you want to go around repeating, Trucy. Yeah. So, you can see solder marks on the back right here under the, the heat. It'd get a little crispy. So if it was set off here, uh, then it could hit the stage. If it hit the stage, then it could still hit the dressing room area. And if it were up on stage, it could hit uh, Gavin's guitar uh, up on that elevator in uh, the little raised platform in the air. And if that igniter were in the guitar, then it could be caused to burst into flames from the stage. Uh, it will depend on how tall they say the thing is. Um, will she say anything about the earpiece? Nope, she don't care about the earpiece.
She didn't know anything about that. We're gonna dart around a little, see if we can't find the remainder. I cannot express my shock and chagrin. All I can see before me is the stage and me upon it. Nothing smaller, nothing less radiant catches my eye. Ooh, you're getting on in years. Not much time left to make your mark, huh? Long pause. This is not how I was seeing it. <laughs> he was essentially saying, uh, I, I, I'm busy with the stage. I don't have time for this little thing you're showing me. Uh, and Trucy has interpreted it as... My, I am getting old, my eyes are going, and so I can't see this thing that you're holding up in front of me. <laughs> he doesn't care about what I have to show him. I get the point. Alright, um... Let's check the dressing, the Gavineer's room here. Let's see if we can get another flag running. Oh, we got a flag at the entrance. A story flag, not, you know, a flag flag. Here's Darian, the one who was implicated by Lamoror's testimony. Neko, this is uh, the first game in the Apollo Justice Ace Attorney trilogy. It's a set of interactive fiction games. Um, a follow-up trilogy to the original Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney trilogy. Come to laugh at the murderer? Darian. Angry Pompadour. If you are not familiar with the series, if you've ever seen a meme of, like, a guy in a blue suit with pointy hair, like, yelling objection and the like at a guy in a maroon suit with gray hair or any memes uh, involving them, then you've seen Phoenix Wright content. That old bag opens her pie hole and wham, bam, my life goes down the chute. Thanks. He's going to hurt somebody with that pompadour. It'll let me work while I'm a suspect. It really is. For this to be here the way it is, his hair has got to go, like, out and wrap around. So it's got to be, like, out and over like that. Uh, very carefully groomed to make it seem like it's a bullet in all forms. And then he has dyed this inner curve. From software. I have dabbled in a couple of the Souls titles. Um, never really got good at those. I played a lot of Elden Ring. Never finished it. They're okay. Uh, I like some of the theming, the storytelling, the world building. Gameplay-wise, eventually I get tired of it. Yeah, they're okay. They're neat. I really like the setting and the visuals of Bloodborne. Never played that one. Bloodborne has that real kind of gothic horror meets uh, kind of Lovecraftian eldritch horror kind of stuff. Very neat. Darian isn't in the best of moods, is he? Not many people are these days, it seems. Uh, I did play a bit of Armored Core. Didn't really get very far into that at all. Um, again, neat setting, neat visuals. In concept, cool. Never really sparked, you know?
uh, let's see, ones I'm playing right now uh, as my kind of off-stream entertainment is every day or every every other day or so I play some Hell Divers with some folks I know, and uh, in between that I'm playing a lot of Dragon's Dogma too. It is a crime scene, not exactly the happiest place to hang out. And Gavin had to go to rub salt in the wound. My alibi is rock solid. Rock solid. It's about your alibi. You have to ask. Yeah, I know a lot of folks that are really into uh, a lot of the From Software style titles. I have to ask. The shooting happened right in the middle of the third set. That's right. Music was blaring when we heard those gunshots. There's a point at which they say that he missed timing. Hey there, Philip. Um, Gavin asserted he missed timing at a particular spot. I wonder if he missed the timing because he took some sort of action. Like he did a thing. It's good time so far. It's really carrying the tradition, uh, Philip. I don't think he's a... I don't know, uh, how the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, uh lines up as far as time of release with this guy. As far as his getup and his hair, um, if you changed the art style of him, he could definitely be in a JoJo book. Welcome back, Okaneki. Found Mr. Latus dead. Got 10,000 witnesses who saw me, too. Yeah. Right there on that stage. Your guitar playing was something else. Thanks, little lady. See? This whole thing's a sham. I can't believe they aren't letting me work. No need to yell at me. It's Lamoror's fault. She was the one who said she heard his voice at the moment of the crime. Never even talked to that old windbag. Oh, see. This is another thing calling out that the time that these things, that the killing happened, is different than when it's being asserted. Like, he still hadn't died, and we heard the gunshots in the room, but it seems like something's off as far as the sequence of events. Could she possibly identify me? They won't let you work. He won't let me work. Gavin says I gotta lie low till the suspicion is clear. What suspicion? He can, he can be such a stick in the mud. Mr. Gavin, a stick in the mud? I wonder what the basis of that saying is. Is it just that the idea of poking mud with a stick is no fun? Or is there some origin to it that uh, extends just the raw concept of a stick being in the mud to not being a uh, entertaining thing? You know, is there more to it than just the idea that that wouldn't be a lot of fun? All right, Phil, have fun with that. And thanks for swinging through. I mean, he look all flashy and showy, but he's straight as an arrow, man. Except when he's depressed. You hear him whining the other day? Oh, you mean the thing with the mixing board? 
There was that performance just now. What was all that about? This part is off. Okay. This piece, if we were to play back through this and then we, we line it up with uh, Lamoror and G Gavin's performance, I don't know if it's it's supposed to be one-to-one. -one. When does he mess up? Because the moment that he messes up, does it line up with the moment that Gavin's guitar bursts into flames? Because if it does, that would mean that his mess up is potentially when he grabs the uh, the the uh, the detonator and presses it to set off the uh, the ignition switch. It was you, Darian? He's just a perfectionist, is all. Not a bad guy, really. I think the Gaviners are the best. I have all your albums. The band's fine, too. Gavin can write a good tune. I'll give him that. Come to think of it, I haven't seen Prosecutor Gavin around much. Oh, him? He's down at the prosecutor's office, most likely. The prosecutor's office? Never been there, have I? The dead on the victim should have come in from Interpol. Normally, I'd be down there dealing with it. Normally. Let's go check it out. I've always wanted to see the prosecutor's office. That's you know, not such a bad idea. Say hey, hi for me, okay? Oh, and screw you. <laughs> Tell him I want into that crime scene. Well, I'll be going now. Hey, wait. Yes? What do you really think happened? Really? You don't think I did it, right? Well, great. Way to instill a guy with some confidence. Just remember, I was ripping it up on stage when it happened, okay? Ripping. Don't get led astray by some siren song, eh? Get this one wrong and you'll be eating humble pie for a year. I'll bake it myself. Let's not talk to him anymore, all right? I don't like him. Detective Darian Crescent. He's one... I feel like his name has got to be another pun or play on words, but I don't know what it is. Took me way too long to notice romaine lettuce. There's one stone I'd leave unturned if I had a choice. Let's check this and then... Okay. Okay, it's like right there at the end of the fourth. Uh, but no, this is during uh, Guilty and not um, the... the What's it called? Guitar Serenade. Okay, that's different. That still means that there was something that he had an opportunity to do uh, during the guilt, the, the guilty song there. We'll check this one and see if it leads to the next kind of trial event. Let's try to get a little further in tonight. So this is it. The governor's head, the governor's head office. Not the band's office. It's the prosecutor's office. I mean, you wouldn't be able to tell. Yeah, so that's why I'm asking, what is this creepy thing, object, whatever? Like Prosecutor Gavin's on the phone. I guess we'll have to come back. Or we can hide behind that bookshelf real quiet, like. That's eavesdropping. 
All right, Daniel, thanks for swinging through. Have a good day. Why, we'd just be waiting, quietly, so he won't notice. And what if we heard something scandalous about the band? She'd make a good reporter for a gossip mag. A replica? So why was he after it in the first place? Yeah, Latouse. Latouse, look, don't talk to me about those Borginians, okay? Just get me that report. Chop, chop. And stop leaving mysterious objects in my office, okay? Times like this when I start to miss Darian. Huh? Uh, hiya. Just thought we'd drop in. Hope you're not mad. How could I be? There's not enough tee-hee in the world, in any case. Have a seat. Prosecutor Gavin, the philanthropist. Watch and learn, Apollo. So who have you come to see? Huh? Javier, lead vocalist for the Gaviniers, or Prosecutor Gavin, scourge of the courtroom? What do you think he means, Apollo? I think he's giving us a choice. We can either ask him about the concert or the case. Which way to go? It's an impressive bit of pyrotechnics that did this. It's the guitar from the concert, isn't it? Wow, it definitely got wrecked. Never guessed that wasn't the end of it. I had a specialist analyze the guitar, incidentally. Did you find anything out? He didn't have a lot of time, so it's still unclear. But the results he came up with were intriguing. Intriguing. How does that guitar tie into anything we that went on? Sounds like something we should ask about. What's that on the plate there? Is that gum? Gum? Maybe he was chewing it when the phone rang. They put it on the plate for later consumption. That's... Now, they distort the size of things in Ace Attorney a lot. But if that thing under glass on the plate there is a stick of gum or is a chewed bit of gum, that's a that's a mouthful. At that point, he wasn't chewing it. He, it just resided in a majority of his mouth. That'd be like taking one of the traditional, like, giant jawbreakers and just sliding it in there. <laughs> it's not even being licked or anything like that. It just it just has taken up residence. <laughs> Don't jump to any conclusions now. That's no chewing gum. Take a closer look. Although I really shouldn't be offering, should I? What is that? Like a lump of plastic. Wait, that phone call. Creepy thing, object, whatever. It's like Prosecutor Gavin's on the other. It's a replica. And Latouse was after it. Does this have something to do with Mr. Latus? Wait a second. You were listening to my phone call, weren't you? Ooh, us? I tried to stop him, really, but he forced me to. You were the one digging for a scandal, Miss Reporter. To tell the truth, I'm not even sure what it is. But apparently it's a model of something undercover agent Mr. Latus was after. This lump. Do you mind telling us what you do know about it? Okay, 
everything else seems to be like paraphernalia, so. Got all the guitar. Oh. So, the filing cabinet is apparently part of the guitar case. Why so many guitars? You never have too many guitars. They're like my lovers. I didn't just hear him say that. <laughs> They're backup guitars, Apollo. Don't you know anything? Rock and rollers always smash their guitars at the end of a show. And no wonder it's so hard to make it as a mu musician. You know what? You should try rocking a little, Apollo. And break breaking his guitars while he watches. That might be a little too rocking. Of course, I would never do such a thing. Did I not say they're like my lovers? Do I seem like the kind of man who would do such a thing to one he loves? Well, maybe he doesn't want that question answered, you know? That's something that you shouldn't give people an opportunity to uh, answer. Because the answer you get uh, might paint you as some sort of like, you know, monster. <laughs> oh no, not at all. I mean, you're Mr. Gavin, upstanding prosecutor. Like all those prosecutors we've had before that aren't like serial assaulters and murderers. What happened to, pro to Prosecutor Gavin, God of Rock. That reminds me, did you see the paper today? Yes. I always read the TV section. Good girl. How about you, hair forehead? I read the funnies. <laughs> then you will not have seen this. Concert of Tragedy. The Prosecutor's Deadly Song. Oh, is that a new show? I haven't heard about that one. It's not a show, it's an article. News, you know. Does this have anything to do with the case? Since getting back from the trial, my phone has been ringing off the hook. How does it feel to take a man's life with a song? Have you ever hummed a man all the way to death row? <laughs> Uh, the gimmick here being that uh, in the trial, one of the concepts that was brought up was that the mur the sequence of events of the murder lined up with the song that was being sung uh, during the con well during a big part of the concert. You know, his guitar lighting on fire, somebody being shot, and then the guitar and the the you know so the supposed killer and victim being raised up on the platform. Do you think you could sing for me over the phone? It is endless. Endless. Thanks to the case you made today, of course. Oh, it was all Apollo's idea. Is that a newspaper over there, too? It's the Borginian Daily Bugle. Go ahead and take a look. Thanks, but I can't read Borginian. Oh, that's right. Suffice it to say, this is a bit big. This is big. Stutter, stutter. This is big news over there as well. But they didn't go so far as to mention the lyrics to my song. Probably no one in Borginia could believe it. Probably seen as just a theory at this point. Prosecutor Gavin Theory. Her journalist didn't see the need to mention it. That makes sense. I hardly know what to think of it myself. Lamoror's testimony will probably be in the evening edition, I imagine. Which is why I had Darian step down from the investigation for now. Yet we ran into him moping in front of the Coliseum. 
Lamoror was my invited guest, so it is a rather delicate situation. You understand how much I want to solve this case. Quickly, as po uh, if possible. All right, let's, let's put down a save so I don't forget. Wanted to get a little bit further, but we are past our normal end time here. So we're going to wrap up there, folks. Wrap up there. Ah, oh, we did make some progress. I think we're probably closing in on the next day of the trial. Generally, I do want to keep doing this. I want to at least get through one of the games before we, uh, if we decide to move away from it, we, we get at least that far. Now, uh, I do want to also weave in other games, so... In the days where we're we're playing a game more than once, uh, as opposed to coding, we are going to be playing kind of a variety of stuff. Keep it fresh, keep things rolling. So I hope everybody had a good time tonight. Uh, if you like what you saw and would like to see more, remember to like, subscribe, follow, that kind of stuff. It will help the algorithm know what you like, and it will also lead you to more of my streams and content. We will be streaming on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday next. So I hope to see you at the next uh, at the next broadcast, and I hope you have a nice night. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>